أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا اللهم بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعليما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم أعزنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين آمين أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters I greet you all with the greetings of Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. And welcome to our special series of lectures. This particular series, the theme is the importance of Palestine in Islam and the virtues of Masjid Al-Aqsa. And this is a very important theme for us to understand well because Palestine is the barometer of the heart of this ummah. What is the heart of this ummah? How is this ummah? What is the situation of this ummah? There's a direct correlation between the state of Islam in Palestine, and Palestine is the home of Masjid al-Aqsa, and the rest of the ummah. And so when Palestine suffers, uh, then the ummah also is in a state of suffering. And whenever Palestine was conquered, ruled by the Muslims, then the Ummah uh, experienced that period of peace and felicity, happiness and sakina. And so we need to understand the, this important correlation and to understand the history of Palestine and why it is so important in Islam. It is, it, it is at the very heart of Islam and the concerns of this Muslim Ummah. In our previous lectures, we talked about an important historical lesson for the Ummah today and specifically the, that part of our Ummah in Palestine, an important part of our Ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran an important story from Bani Israel to talk something about their history. This particular revelation of the Quran, the context is it was revealed to the Muslims, to the Prophet ﷺ, and he informed the Muslims of this revelation from Surah Al-Baqarah. It was revealed before Ghazwat al-Badr al-Kubra, this great battle of Badr. At a time when the Muslims did not know about Badr, that it would come. It was forced upon them. Circumstances dictated that. The, the actions of the Quraysh. The Muslims, after migrating to Medina, focus their attention on building that fledgling, new, young Muslim community. 
That was the focus of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, building that community, consolidating that community because they had migrated from Mecca to Medina and the people of Medina accepted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They had made bay'a, the Pledge of Allegiance to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Before the migration, the Bayat Al-Aqaba, Al-Ula and Athania. The first and second pledge of Aqaba, where representatives from the Muslims of Medina came to Aqaba and met with the Prophet ﷺ there and gave bayah to him, setting the stage for the migration for the Hijra. So they went to Medina and the Prophet ﷺ set about to establishing this Muslim community, this young Muslim community. So that was the focus. It wasn't on wars and battles. But Badr was forced upon them. Quraysh marched on Medina with the public stated intention to destroy the Muslims, exterminate them, kill them, and so on. And so the Muslims came to the outskirts of Medina, to the place called Badr, and met Quraysh, and the battle took place there. So the revelation came before that, before Badr, before and before the Muslims knew that Badr is coming, this event of Badr is coming upon them. But it's to prepare them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing them by this important lesson taken from the pages of the history of Bani Israel. The children of Israel, their time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning this to prepare the Muslims for what is coming. He knows, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, even though the Muslims don't know about this, but he wants to prepare his believers and he prepared them well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran. Alam tara ilal mala'i min bani Isra'ila min ba'di Musa idh qalu li li nabiyyil lahum ba'ath lana malikan nukatil fi sabilillah قال هل عصيتم إن كتب عليكم القتال ألا تقاتلوا قالوا وما لنا ألا نقاتل في سبيل الله وقد اخرجنا من ديارنا وأبنائنا فلما كتب عليهم القتال تولوا إلا قليلا منهم Wallahu alimun bidhalimeen. Have you not thought about the group of Bani Israel after the time of Musa, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, when they said to a prophet of theirs, appoint for us a king and we will fight in the, in the way of Allah. Because this was a time now when they were downtrodden, uh, they were weak, divided and so on and others their enemies had the upper hand over them was ruling them so they, they waited after a long time for a prophet to come to them and uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophet Shamwil to them Sayyidina Shamwil prophet Samuel and uh, th this prophet among them uh, they're inviting them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the prophets, they only do that. That's what they do. They invite people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to nothing else. And then the people, a group from among them, Bani Israel, they ask for a king, for the prophet to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send them a king that can lead them into battle against their enemies. And so, Sayyidina Shamweel alayhi salam, this prophet, he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send him a king. And then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent uh, Saul, Talut, to them. So have you not thought about that group? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing the Quran, telling the Muslims about this. The group from Bani Israel, after the time of Musa alayhi salam, they said to the prophet of theirs, appoint for us a king who will fight in Allah's way. He said, would you then refrain from fighting if fighting was prescribed for you? You're asking 
to, for all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send you a leader who would lead you in the battle so you can fight with him. And the, the, then the Prophet, Sayyidina Shamweel, is asking them, would you then change your mind after making this promise? It's a serious thing. They said, why should we not fight in Allah's way while we have been driven out of our homes and our children, families have been taken as captives because they're downtrodden. It's important to learn the lessons from history. And, and so if, if you have experienced this, don't impose it on others. Don't exploit and persecute others. If you have experienced this, if your people have experienced that persecution, you learn from that. You know how difficult it is. Don't impose it from others. Be good to others. This is a lesson Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to teach us, this particular group. And so they, they said, why should we not fight in the way of Allah? Look at what has happened to us. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, but when fight was ordered for them, ordained on them, they turned away, all except a few. فَلَمَّا كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقِتَالِ تَوَلَّوْا إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِّنْهُمْ Yes, when fighting was prescribed on them, they turned away from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالظَّالِمِينَ And Allah is all aware of the wrongdoers, the zalim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them as such zalim because they went against the promise they made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, among them, there are those who follow through on their promise after it was made clear to them by their prophet, Sayyidina Shamweel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in a revelation in the Quran about this important story of lesson to us. وَقَالَ لَهُمْ نَبِيُّهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ بَعَثَ لَكُمْ طَالُوتَ مَلِكًا قَالُوا أَنَّا يَكُونُ لَهُ الْمُلْكُ عَلَيْنَا وَنَحْنُ أَحَكُّ بِالْمُلْكِ مِنْهُ وَلَمْ يُؤْتَ سَعَةً مِنَ الْمَالِ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَاهُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَزَادَهُ بَسْطَةً فِي الْعِلْمِ وَالْجِسْمِ وَاللَّهُ يُؤْتِي مُلْكَهُ وَاللَّهُ يُؤْتِي مُلْكَهُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ And their Prophet Sayyidina Shamweel alayhi salam said to them, Indeed Allah has appointed Talud as a king over you. Saul. So look at the response. They said, how can he be king over us when we are fitter than him for the kingdom? And he has not been given enough wealth. So Talut came to them and he was a soldier in the army from humble background. He was from the Binyamin tribe. The lowest of the tribes among them. So they're saying, why should we follow, follow him? He, you're saying he's the king over us. He must be a leader. But we are fitter than him. He has no wealth. He's not a rich person. They're looking for different things. We're fitter than him. We are from the, uh, those who are from the lineage of the tribe of uh, Judah. That was the royal lineage that our kings among them. So they're saying, why should we follow this person from a, a low tribe or a lowly tribe? That he is not uh, wealthy, popular, and so on and so forth. So th their prophet, Sayyidina Shamweel, told them, Verily Allah has chosen him above you and has increased him abundantly in knowledge and stature. In knowledge, ilm, and jism, physical stature. He's, he's strong, he's intelligent, he, he proved himself as a soldier of their army before, and so on. And then, Wallahu uh, wasin alim, Allah is all sufficient for his creatures' needs, and he's the all-knower of everything. So, they, they're asking for something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this case a leader. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent it them. Uh, 
And then they are questioning that. And this is, the Prophet says, the previous Ummah before him, they were destroyed because of their excessive questioning of their prophets. Then they were destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the decision, uh, you should follow that. And the, the, the Prophet alayhi wasallam was blessed with sahabas who would say, Sami'ana wa ata'ana. We hear, we listen, and we obey. There are people who would say, Sami'ana wa asayna. We hear and we disobey. That's their nature. And whenever you have this among people, they lose. They become disunited. They become weak because of this, because they don't follow their leaders. When people follow their leaders, they become strong in this way. So the Prophet ﷺ was blessed with sahabas who were obedient to him, follow him, and he became victorious. So the, the Prophet Sayyidina Shamuel is telling them, Prophet Samuel, uh, about this, uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is Allah, He Allah, who selected uh, Sayyidina uh, Talut to be their leader. So they formed the army to try to fight against their enemies. وَقَالَ لَهُمْ نَبِيُّهُمْ إِنَّ آيَةَ مُلْكِهِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ التَّابُوتُ فِيهِ سَكِينَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَبَقِيَّةٌ مِّمَّا تَرَكَ آلُ مُوسَى وَآلُ هَارُونَ مِمَّا تَرَكَ آلُ مُوسَى وَآلُ هَارُونَ تَحْمِلُهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ in So they're saying that oh, if he's the king for us, the leader sends us a sign. And then Sayyidina Shamwil, the Prophet told them, Verily, the sign of his kingdom is that there shall come to you a taboot. A taboot. In their tradition, it's a wooden box that contains a source of barakah for them. It is, Allah SWT says, verily the sign of his kingdom is that he sh they shall come to you a taboot, the wooden box. Wherein is sakina, peace and reassurance from your Lord. And a remnant of that which Musa salam, and Harun salam, left behind. Carried by the angels. Verily in this is a sign for you if you're indeed believers. So this taboot, a wooden box, they had before and it was taken from them in a previous battle. They, their enemies took this from them. So they lost this source of barakah. The barakah ultimately comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah subhanahu wa put that in that, there from the remnants of uh, things that belong to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Sayyidina Harun alayhi salam, and they kept it in, in, in a box. And it, it, as long as they had it with them, it, it gave them peace and felicity. Then it was captured by their enemies, and then they, they, they started to lose their battles and to be defeated in that way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fihi sakina to mirabbikum. Where is the sakina from your Lord? Peace and grace and reassurance. reassurance. Imam Abdul Razak stated that Sayyidina Qatada said, wherein is sakina means grace. It also means mercy. This is also meaning given by Sayyidina uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas. And then Allah SWT says, وَبَقِيَّةٌ مِمَّا تَرَكَ آلُ مُوسَى وَآلُ هَارُونَ And a remnant remains of that which Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and Sayyidina Harun left behind. Sayyidina uh, Imam ibn Jarir related uh, that this is a remnant that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left behind uh, uh, as, as it referring to the staff of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and rem remnants of the tablet that was revealed to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Imam Abdul Razak also added that uh, some of it contained a pot of manna and salwa. 
uh, referring to remnants of the revelation tablets that was given to, uh, revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And others said that it contained the staff of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, his famous staff that he used to overcome the magicians in the court of Pharaoh earlier when Pharaoh challenged him and his shoes as well. Uh, th these things were with them in this uh, taboot and it was a source of peace and felicity, harmony for them. And carried by the angels, uh, Sayyidina Ibn Ab Abdullah ibn Abbas said, the angels came down while carrying the taboot from the sky to the earth. And they placed it in front of Talut, Saul, while the people were watching. The people from Bani Israel, they witnessed this. Uh, and because they asked for a sign, that's a sign. If, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you, as you're claiming, appointed uh, Saul as uh, the leader for us, then shows a sign. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, placed it. Uh, the, the scholars such as Imam Masudi uh, said that the tabu was brought to Saul's house, Talut's house. So the people believed in the prophethood of uh, the, their prophet Shamwil, and then they accepted Talut. In the fidadika la ayat alakum, verily, in this is a sign for you, testifying to the truth in what I have sent, with my prophethood and my command for you to obey Talut, that they should obey. Uh, the king that was appointed over them to lead them in battle. So they, they accepted this now and then they formed their army. They formed their army. And initially it was an army of some of the accounts says 80,000. But there's something that happened that reduced that number. We want to see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran and what his scholars have said. The next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in this revelation, but it's a great story, uh, which, which leads to the confrontation, the story involving Sayyidina Dawud alayhi salam and Jalut, David and Goliath, that we talk about, we'll talk about inshallah. فَلَمَّا فَصَلَ طَالُوتُ بِالْجُنُودِ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مُبْتَلِيكُمْ بِنَهَرُ فَمَنْ شَرِبَ مِنْهُ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتْعَمْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي إِلَّا مَنْ غَتَرَفَ غُرْفَةً بِيَدِهِ فَشَرِبُوا مِنْهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْهُمْ فَلَمَّا جَاوَزَهُ هُوَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ قَالُوا لَا طَاقَةَ لَنَا الْيَوْمَ بِجَالُوتَ وَجُنُودِهِ قَالَ الَّذِينَ يَذُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُ اللَّهِ so then when Talu set out with the army, set with the army, and, and this event is taking place in, in Palestine. Uh, that's why it's so important for us to understand. Set up with his army. He said, Very Allah will try you by a river. You'll reach a river. So whoever drinks from that river, he is not from me. And whoever tastes it not, he is from me. Except for one who takes the earth in the hollow of his hand, small amount to drink. A small amount to drink just to quench your thirst. So the the the, the army is advancing and they reach the river. It's hot. In the sun, they're thirsty. And they're reminded you cannot drink from the river if you want to just quench your thirst. You take some in your hand and drink. But most of them uh, just jumped into the river, drank as much as they want. They're, they're so thirsty, they're not, they're, not, they're not patient. They're not patient. And, and, and fasting is something that gives us that suburb. That patience, because when you're fasting, sometimes you, you, you may feel thirsty. Especially during the day, uh, midday, if you're out working and so on. Uh, doing physical work also, you feel thirsty. You want to drink some water, but you're fasting. You have to be patient. You don't do that. 
You wait until Maghrib time to break your fast. It, it builds within you this stamina, this patience. Uh, yes. Uh, and so some, they, they drank. Some, the, the historians, the scholars mentioned that of that 80,000 army, 76,000 did that. And so they, uh, uh, Talud uh, released them from the army because that's what, that was, uh, the, the, what they were told before the beginning. Allah Subhanahu will test you with that river. Now you don't drink from it. So they did, most of them, 76,000. So now only 4,000 left in the army. And then they were tested with different things. Uh, Talut uh, said that those who have other worldly obligations to look after their family uh, and business and so on, they cannot be in the army. Only those who are committed to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must have this strong commitment over and above everything else from, from the, in this dunya. We, we are serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is fi sabilillah. It's a purification of the ranks. And then this test continued until finally only 313 soldiers remain in the army. And that's, this is an important number now. 313. Remember, this revelation is coming down before Badr. And the, one of the important parallels with Badr is that the army of Muslims, the number in the Muslim army, the Sahabas with the Prophet they numbered 313. 313. That's a special number. And it has tremendous spiritual implications and spiritual benefit and value. 313. The number of soldiers in the army of Talut, Saul, and similarly, the number of soldiers at Badr. Yes. Remember all of this came down, this revelation, before the Muslims knew anything about Badr. Look how the, 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 the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the miraculous work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then, those who remain, they cross the river. The enemy is in the other side. So when they crossed it, the river, Talud and those who believe with him, they said, they look, they're looking at the enemies now. The enemies are the in sight. They can see them. They're strong, powerful, outnumbering them, more equipped than them. And they have Jalut with them, the enemies, Goliath. So they, they cross the river. They'll go over the other side, 313 of them. And then some of them said, we have no power against Jalut and his army. On this day, they, they're stronger than us. They outnumber us. But then among them, the scholars among them said, how often has a small group overcome a mighty host by Allah's permission? Kam min fi'atin. كَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلَةٍ غَلَبَتْ فِئَةٍ كَثِيرَةً بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ How often a small group has overcome a mighty enemy by the permission of Allah. بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Yes. بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ This is the important point that we must recognize. That it's through the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we, we gain victory in this dunya. The, the law of Allah is contained in this special treasure under the throne of Allah. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. There is no might, there is no power, there is no strength except from Allah, except through Allah. And this is why we need to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be mindful of our relationship with Allah. Always keep strengthening that relationship. Every day you're doing your dhikr. You're doing your ibadah. You're keeping close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the time will come when you would need that closeness. When the difficulties come in life. It is those who are near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will survive 
those difficult times. So here the scholars are telling them, the scholars who are with them in this army, 313, with knowledge, they know this is the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This river the scholars have mentioned is a river which flowed between Jordan and Palestine. Before this called says the Sharia River. Then here they are on the other side. The two armies are facing one another. There's a custom, there's an important custom in, in warfare at the beginning at that time, which is when the two army would meet, there's an individual challenge. I share with you the occasion of Badr now as an example of this. When the Muslims met the Quraysh at Badr, this is how the battle started. The Quraysh sent three of their men for one-on-one -on -one combat, and the Muslims sent three of their soldiers for one-on-one -on -one combat. The three soldiers, Sahabas, from the Muslim side was Sayyidina Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, then Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, and then Sayyidina Ubaid ibn al-Harith. Rajullahu anhu majma'in. The Quraysh sent Utba ibn Rabi'ah, the father of Hind ibn Utba. And then, secondly, Shayba ibn Rabi'ah, the, the brother of Utba. Utba ibn Rabi'ah, Shayba ibn Rabi'ah. Brothers and Utbah is the father of Hind. And then Walid ibn Utbah, the brother of Hind. Th th these were three powerful people. Three of the outstanding soldiers from among Quraysh. So Quraysh are confident. They're well armed, equipped. So they advance in the middle of be between the forces, the Muslim forces at Badr, and then the Quraysh forces. So in the middle, three of them are there. And then they, they face the, the three Sahabas, and in, in short, a short time, these are powerful Sahabas now. Sayyidina Hamza, powerful Sahaba. Sayyidina Ali, powerful Sahaba. Yes. Uh, and uh, Sayyidina Ubaid ibn Harith as well. And they, they killed the three representatives of Quraysh, like this. And then the rest of the battle started. So in a similar way now, the challenge is made. The challenge, who would face the army? So Goliath, from the army of the, of the enemies, uh, <clears throat> he is strong. He's like a giant among men. Big, strong. And he comes forward. He's a leader, strong soldier. And he's saying, send, send who you want to send from your side. Sending Talut, the king, the leader of the army of Ben Israel. Then Talut is asking for soldiers, someone to come forward, a volunteer to go and fight Jalut, Goliath. But Goliath is so strong, the soldiers are afraid of him. And then a young man, a young man from their midst, get up. He got up, came forward, he says he's going to fight. Before this happened, when Tal Talut is trying to get people, some volunteers to fight, and no one wants to come forward, he then said that whoever come forward, he will offer the hand of his daughter in marriage to that person who would fight Jalut, 
But the source is not coming forward because if they're dead, how can they marry her? It's no use. Uh, so, uh, no takers. And then after some time, then a young person stepped forward. His name is Dawood, alayhi salam. Prophet Dawood. At this time, he was not a prophet yet. He wasn't appointed as a prophet. But he started off like this. He is there from the city of Bethlehem or Baitul Laham. Baitul Laham in Arabic, Bethlehem in English, in Palestine. He, that's where he's from. Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salam. Now his father had sent him with his other brothers. He's the youngest of them. But the father instructed him that he shouldn't fight. He would just help uh, his brothers and the other soldiers, give them water to drink food, serve them like this. But he said no. He's going to fight. Because none of the other soldiers wanted to face Jalut. He is so big, huge. And now Jalut comes forward and he wants to show his army his strength. That he's going to just kill whoever comes in front of him. And this would give inspiration to his soldiers, his army. That they would destroy this army of Saul, Talut that came to oppose them. So, Sayyidina Dawud alayhi salam, step forward. The king, Talut, is not impressed. He's a young man, small. How can he fight? Jalut, Goliath. But David, Dawud alayhi salam, he's insisting. He said, I'm going to fight him. I'm not afraid of him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed this feeling in his heart. He said that recently, before he came in the army, he killed a lion which had threatened his father's uh, sheep, his herd of sheep, killed the lion that was attacking them. He said before then he killed a bear. And he says, don't judge me by my appearance. I fear no one, no beast even, because he killed them. So, Saul says, after he couldn't find anyone else to fight Jalut, Goliath, he says, okay. And he says, may Allah guard you and grant you strength. So, then Talut, his army, they dressed Dawood, David, with battle armor, handed him a sword so he can go and fight Jalut. But he, he wasn't accustomed to this. He felt uncomfortable with this armor, battle armor that all the other soldiers are wearing. And it's obstructing his movements. So he removed it. He removed it, subhanAllah. Took, took out all of that. All he took was a slingshot. He took a slingshot, he picked up some pebbles. And he's walking towards Jalut, Goliath. SubhanAllah. And then Talut and the other soldiers are saying, what can you do with that slingshot and that small pebble? He put some pebbles in a bag on his shoulder and his slingshot. That's what he has. And the soldiers and Talut saying, what can you do with that? Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salam, he said, Allah is the one who protected me from the claws of the bear and the, fang of the uh, fangs of the lion that I killed. He killed the lion, killed a bear with his bear hand. He says, Allah will protect me now from this evil giant. This evil unbeliever who is so proud and arrogant. Subhanallah. It, it, uh, imagine this scene now. Dawud alayhi salam, Prophet David. And remember this is before he was appointed as a prophet. He is walking towards Jalut, this powerful person, giant, in size, so strong. And it reminds us, uh, there's, a, there's a picture of this situation in Palestine, where a young boy, Faris is his name, he's standing up with a rock in his hand, 
in front of a tank, a powerful tank, millions of dollars worth of the most advanced military tank, so powerful. And you'd wonder, what can he do with a rock? SubhanAllah, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who grants victories. Ultimately, it will come. So, when Jalut saw this young man look like a boy, he laughed and he roared. Are you out to play war game with one of your playmates or are you tired of your life? I will simply cut off your head with one swipe of my sword. So he's arrogant, behaving like this. Then Dawud told him, You may have armor, shield, and sword, but I face you in the name of Allah, whose laws you have mocked. Today you will see that it is not the sword that kills, but the will and power of Allah. SubhanAllah, look at the iman, the fate of David in front of Goliath. And so he took a rock from his pouch, put it in his slingshot, and he aimed it, swung it, aimed it at Jalut, and released that rock, that rock, small rock. And it went like the speed of an arrow and hit Jalut on the head with great force. Blood started to flow from the head of Jalut and he just fell down to the ground, lifeless, just like that, before he could draw his sword. Subhanallah. By the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the power of Allah, little rocks, pebbles. Think back about the story that we mentioned in previous lectures on our live stream about the Ashabul Fil. Alam Tara Kaifa Fa'ala Rabbuka bi Ashabil Fil. In that so talking about the, the, the story of the army of elephants and Abraha, this uh, arrogant ruler from Yemen who came to attack the Kaaba, to destroy the Kaaba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent birds with pebbles raining down on them and destroy those mighty, powerful fighting elephants. And the soldiers in the army destroyed all of them. Yes, pebbles. You never think that that can do anything. Yes, but with the power of Allah, any powerful person can be defeated with this power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you have this belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So David struck Goliath one blow with his small rock from his slingshot, killed the giant. Now he fell on the ground and he's dead now. His soldiers in his army, thousands of them, they saw their leader killed like that. They got scared. They ran away. They turned their backs. And now the army of Talut went after them now and killed them. Yes, look at the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then Dawud alayhi salam, remember once again, he's not yet appointed as a prophet by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But because of what he did, he became a hero overnight. And then the king, Talut, he had made a promise that whoever would kill Jalut, he would marry his daughter to him. And so he did. He fulfilled his promise. His daughter, uh, Mikal, was married to uh, Sayyidina Dawud al-Islam, David, like this. And so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then declared that Allah gave Dawud the kingdom. Make him a prophet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, so they routed them by Allah's leave, and David killed Goliath. And Allah gave him, David, the kingdom after the death of Saul and Samuel, and, wis and he gave him wisdom and taught him of that which he will. And if Allah did not check one set of people by means of another, the earth would indeed be full of mischief, but Allah is full of bounty to the world. Yes, if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is an important point here that is revealed to us in the next ayah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not check one set of people 
by means of another, the art would be full of mischief. And mischief, evil is spreading on the art because of this, that people are not willing to stop others who are spreading evil. Because they're evil people, that's all they want to do, spread evil on this earth. Good people must stop them. This is the way, the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salam was made a prophet by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ruled in a good way his people and showed them the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him great bounties the language of the birds and animals. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him that his fasting became the best of fast. The Prophet says the best of fast is the fast of Dawood alayhi salam. He would fast one day and break his fast the next day. Then the next day he continues fasting. One day fast, one day not. Or another day fasting like this. And then the praying of Dawood at night was the best of prayer. The Prophet says he would sleep a portion of the night and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awake for the rest of the night. He does it, you know, not, not going to extremes, but a moderate way. In this way, Dawood alayhi salam, a great example for us. And in this, this uh, encounter of David and Goliath, great example for us, great inspiration for us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslims of Palestine with the blessings he gave to Dawood alayhi salam and his army. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Um, sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأخي دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته